Echo TV is a co-production of Minnesota's Emergency and Community Health Outreach Collaborative of health, safety, ethnic and nonprofit agencies and TPT's Minnesota channel. Hello and welcome to ECHO, which stands for Emergency Community Health Outreach. I'm your host, Lillian McDonald, the Executive Director for ECHO, and we're bringing you a program in multiple languages. This version, of course, in English. Our topic this time, folic acid and the importance of folic acid as part of prenatal care. We'll have a guest to talk about this subject, but to get some background, please watch this. Taking a multivitamin every day is important for the health of all women. Most women don't get everything their body needs from eating healthy foods alone. Proper nutrition from eating foods like fruits and vegetables helps, but the only way to guarantee your body is getting all the nutrition it needs is to take a multivitamin with 400 micrograms of folic acid every day. Folic acid is the man-made form of folate and is found in most multivitamins. Folate is a natural B vitamin we get when we eat dark green leafy vegetables like broccoli and asparagus. Folate is also found in citrus fruits like oranges and grapefruits, whole grains, dried beans, and peas. It is good to also eat plenty of these types of foods. It's especially important for women to get enough folic acid because they may become pregnant. Not all pregnancies are planned so it is important to take folic acid on a daily basis to be sure your body has the vitamins it needs if you become pregnant. Folic acid helps prevent birth defects in babies. Some research also shows it may protect people from heart disease, some cancers, and helps with healthy cell growth. Taking folic acid daily before and during early pregnancy can help prevent up to 70 percent of birth defects known as neural tube defects or NTDs. NTDs are birth defects of the spine, skull, and brain. Birth defects that don't allow the brain to fully develop can cause a stillborn or death soon after birth. Birth defects that affect the spine are called spina bifida and can cause a child to have lifelong difficulties, such as not being able to walk or run. Some children with spina bifida may also experience learning problems. To help prevent these birth defects, Women should take a multivitamin every day or a folic acid pill found in most drugstores. Folic acid pills cost less and are smaller in size, making them easier to swallow. If you have trouble swallowing pills, some multivitamins come in a chewable form. There are also some for vegetarians. Because birth defects often develop before a woman knows she's pregnant, all women should take folic acid. If you get in the habit of taking a multivitamin as part of your daily routine, such as taking the pill after you brush your teeth in the morning, it will be easier to remember. Folic acid is especially important for women with a family history of birth defects. They may need to take a multivitamin and extra folic acid as prescribed by a doctor well before they become pregnant. Never take more than one multivitamin each day because it's not healthy. A doctor, nurse, or women, infant, and children dietitian can give you more information about folic acid and other things you can do for your health. Even if you're not planning on becoming pregnant, starting a routine of taking a multivitamin every day will help you stay healthy. Welcome back. You're watching ECHO, Emergency Community Health Outreach. That's a program that we produce every month on a variety of health and safety topics in multiple languages. Our program this time is on folic acid. And joining us to talk about folic acid is Mary Ann Kewen. She is the State Director of Programs for the March of Dimes here in Minnesota. Thank you very much for joining us on ECHO. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, we really appreciate it. This is Absolutely. an important, important subject matter. It is. Um, not just for women. Mm -hmm. Who, who can become pregnant, um, but, but for everybody because uh, it's an important vitamin and a part of our nutritious diet. It is, and there's many benefits to it Great. for men and women. 
Great. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, the basics of folic acid just okay. so we get uh, a, a little clearer understanding because even though this message has been out there, um, a lot of folks uh, need a refresher course every yep. now and then. Why they do. is that, they do, do you think? Well, the, the basic is if you consume enough folate or folic acid in your diet every day, and for women especially, um, those of childbearing age, those who can become pregnant, um, if they have enough folic acid in their diet, they can reduce their chances of having a birth defect by 50 to 70 percent. Um, you know, some things to note are you should check about your family history, see if you've ever had a child born with a birth defect within your family, because that can alter the decisions that you make with your folic acid How intake. How far back in that family history do you have to go? Um, you know, I would go at least a couple generations back if you can. Obviously, it's not always that easy to, to pick up on that stuff, and sure. we don't always know <laughs> our whole family history. But as much information as you can gather will True. be helpful when you're making these decisions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I was going to add that there are many things that can increase a woman's chance of having a baby born with a birth defect. Um, and again, like I just said, if you've had a, a previous child born with a birth defect, that can increase your chances of having a second one. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a diabetic and you have uncontrolled high blood sugars, that can be a factor to look at. Um, some medicines, like epilepsy medicines, can also have a, a play in whether a child is really? born with a birth okay. defect. Yep. Um, if you're exposed to high temperatures, such as if you've had a high fever, if you um, have been in a whirlpool while you're pregnant, all of those factors need to be uh, taken into consideration. And then, of course, being, being obese. Um, can, which leads to diabetes. Which then. leads to diabetes and, and all those complications that can come with that. So it's careful to, to take a look at your health history um, yourself and, and see what your needs are. And, and what's important, too, though, is this is something you do well before you become pregnant. Absolutely. Conversation yeah. you're having with your family, your physician. Absolutely. You should be checking, you should be thinking about all of these things before you become pregnant and making sure you, um, as a woman, are as healthy as you can be before you actually start thinking about having a baby. Now, since ECHO is a program uh, that we produce in multiple languages, I know that uh, some of our information is provided uh, for the Hispanic community, mm -hmm. Spanish-speaking populations. Mm -hmm. And the Hispanic community in particular needs to be aware of the, the need for folic acid. There's an increase in rates? Yeah, there seems to be a higher uh, prevalence of neural tube defects in the Hispanic population. And there are a lot of things that, uh, you know, factors that we've looked at. Why is this happening? Is it because um, perhaps they're eating more corn products or things that don't necessarily have um, the folate in it. Um, th the issue is we're not really quite clear why it's happening, but, but that population definitely needs to be um, a bit more adverse to, to what it is. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between folic acid and mm -hmm. folate? Okay, well, folate is the natural B vitamin that occurs in your fruits, your vegetables, your whole grains. So um, you can find folate in mainly citrus fruits like oranges, grapefruits, things like that, orange juice, that's a great way to get it. Um, your, your green leafy vegetables, so your broccoli, your spinach, your asparagus, those will all have naturally occurring folate. And then your whole grains, your dried peas, things like that. So Things that we're not really good at always consuming no, unfortunately enough. not. <laughs> Some better than others, yeah. but um, so then folic acid is the man-made version that we can put into other products. So um, we can find folic acid in our uh, grain supply, in our cereals, our breads, our things like that. So and, fortified cereals. Yep. It was actually a supplement added to cereals yep. because we needed it in, yeah. our, in our diets. You bet. In, in 1999, they added it to the U.S. grain supply, and so most of your grains, cereals, breads, all of those things have folic acid added. Mm -hmm. And it, it's important to note that it, it, we've clearly seen the benefit because since uh, the U.S. grain supply was fortified with folic acid, on a nationwide basis, we've actually seen uh, neural tube defects decrease by 30%. Wow. So, so it clearly does make a difference, and it's a simple thing that we can be doing to protect ourselves and, and our babies. And the key is, is to begin taking folic acid or a multivitamin with, of course, folic acid in it 
well before you become pregnant. Absolutely. L let's talk a little bit about birth defects, the common types. I know there are many types, mm -hmm. but some of the common types of, of birth defects that, uh, that we might be able to avoid with the increase in folic acid. Sure, sure. The most common are what we call neural tube defects, and these are birth defects of the brain and spine. Um, now, in that category, the two most common types of neural tube defects are spina bifida and anencephaly. And so spina bifida occurs when the spine and the backbones don't close properly. And so they'll often leave an opening in the baby's spine, um, which can often be treated with uh, surgeries and things like that. But there are certainly challenges that go along with mm -hmm. um, having spina bifida. Now, anencephaly, on the other hand, is when the brain and skull um, do not form properly and they cause either all of the brain or the skull to um, bones to be missing. Mm -hmm. So, and, and many times this results in, in death. Yep. At, at birth, soon after birth, yep. right? Yep. Uh, folic acid generates more cells and this is, is this sort of the theory then in how this will help uh, yeah, overcome it, birth defects? Yep, it, it certainly helps with the bridging of when the, the brain and the spinal are are growing and becoming intact is um, we're able to yeah, mesh those together more properly um, mm -hmm. and including all of the bones and, and things that go into that. But it's important to note that children born with spina bifida uh, can't have normal lives. Absolutely. They are just dealing with uh, a series of surgeries and a series of life challenges yep. with physical impairments that they need to address. Can you describe some of those? Yeah, and, and you said it you said it perfectly that most children with spina bifida, you know, grow up to be happy, healthy individuals mm -hmm. that may face some challenges. So, you know, some of the things that we'll be looking at um, people with spina bifida may have, may not be able to move lower parts of their body. So, you know, they'll need braces or crutches or perhaps wheelchairs to get around. Um, they may have loss of bladder or um, bowel control. Mm -hmm. Um, they may have fluid buildup on their brain, and this often is something that would require surgery. And then as they grow and develop, they also may have some lifelong um, learning disabilities that they can look at mm -hmm. and address. But again, there are programs. Clear to the March of Dimes is heavily involved in some yep. of these programs Absolutely. as well that, that, is, that aids children and families that are, are living with spina bifida. Yep. Absolutely. There's there's great programs out there. There's, you know, routines that people can in, can get into. There are tips and techniques that you can use with children. You know, when you're looking at learning disabilities, there's lots of great tools that we can use. Mm -hmm. But the key is, uh, is overcoming birth defects. Yeah. And that comes in a folic acid man-made pill yep. or yep. enough folate in your diet. Right. Which some cultures are able to consume because uh, they may have better eating habits yep. than others. Yep. But in our rush rush society of these days where fast foods are the norm, <laughs> yep. skipping meals might be the norm. That's just the, not something you want no, to do. No, the typical hamburger probably doesn't have right, <laughs> enough, the amount you need. Enough multivitamins for you. <laughs> right, right. Well, let's talk about then how much folic acid does a woman need? Um, well, typically a woman needs 400 micrograms of folic acid every day in her diet. Um, so, you know, as you were just saying, we often don't get that in the typical diet that we eat, so we would recommend that they take a multivitamin or take a folic acid pill. Um, the other thing to note is that, you know, in previous years we've actually seen a decrease in folic acid levels in, in women and men. And this could be because of low carb diets, this oh, could be because um, more and more people are eating unfortified whole grain breads and things like that. Um, another thing that we should think about and, and note is that there are some women, those that I talked about that were at risk, um, or at higher risk of having difficulties during pregnancy should consult with their doctor or nurse or dietitian um, to find out if they need increased levels. They may need a prescription for extra folate More than in their diet. 400 micrograms yep. a day. Can you take too much folic acid? Um, well, the best answer to that is to check with your doctor or nurse or WIC dietitian and find out what's right for your body. There are some women who will, like I said, need increased levels. Um, a typical multivitamin contains 400 micrograms, which is the uh, daily value that we would recommend all women take. Mm -hmm. um, one thing to note, you should never take more than one multivitamin. Um, and the difference is because multivitamins, as the name kind of predicts, is you've got many, 
many minerals and many vitamins and taking too many of some of those may be unhealthy. Too so. much of a good thing is yep. not always a good thing. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Makes sense. There's always this belief, or maybe, well, it's a misconception, that um, I have to wait until I'm pregnant, yes. and then I start taking folic acid. Yes. I mean, I, I've heard this in conversations yep. with others. Yeah. Um, and again, we've talked about the importance of, of folic acid before yeah. pregnancy, and many pregnancies are unplanned. Yeah, half of all pregnancies are unplanned in the U.S., so that's a pretty significant number. <laughs> and a reason why you probably want to, you know, just be yeah. ready just in case. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and we've seen the studies where lots of women say, I don't need to take folic acid because I'm not planning on becoming pregnant or I'm not actively trying. Well, right. when you look at half of the people might actually become pregnant, we need to look at that. Um, the reason why folic acid is so important to take before you become pregnant is because um, the brain and the spine actually are one of the first things to develop. And so these often develop in the first few weeks of pregnant, mm -hmm. which is often before a woman even knows that she's pregnant. So we want to make sure that women have the adequate amount of folic acid or folate within their bodies so they can help protect those. Um, and you're talking brain. about any women, uh, any women of childbearing age. Any woman of childbearing which age. Which can be in, in some very young women as soon as they start their period. Absolutely. Uh, up until they stop their period. Absolutely. So we can't really pinpoint an, an age range. No. But, you know, that's a, that's a long period of it time. It is. And, you know, and you, they should do it just as a routine part right. of their diet. It's, Whether they're it's planning healthy or not for them. Pregnant. Sure. Um, no matter what. And there's other benefits, too, for folic acid, too, we should mention. It's, it's not just about uh, birth defects and pregnancies, but, again, this increased cell development for cancers. Yes, yes. It's been shown, or there are some possible things that can help show that it protects from heart disease, some cancers like colon cancer, cervical cancer, possibly even breast cancer. Um, it's, it's been shown that it may help prevent um, some other birth defects, such as cleft lip and palate, mm -hmm. or some heart defects in babies as well. Okay. How, uh, how can we make sure that we're getting enough folic acid? Well, the simple thing is to take uh, either a multivitamin or a folic acid pill every day. Make it part of your routine. Um, you can also eat a bowl of breakfast cereal that's been fortified with 100% of the daily value each day. Um, and then you can check the label and make sure that it says 100%. Um, and certainly eat healthy as best you can. That always helps. Good advice. I'd like to thank Marianne Q and our guest from the March of Dimes for joining us on this important subject on folic acid. Thank you very much for joining You're us on Thanks Echo. Thanks for having me. We've talked about a lot of things, but we want you to try to remember at least these three key messages. The first is folic acid helps prevent birth defects that can cause the death or physical disability of a child. Number two, it's hard to get enough folic acid by eating foods alone, but taking a multivitamin, one each day, helps ensure enough folic acid is consumed. And finally, all women who can become pregnant should take 400 micrograms of folic acid daily. My thanks again to Marianne Kewen from the March of Dimes, Minnesota office for joining us on ECHO. I'm your host, Lillian McDonald. ECHO stands for Emergency Community Health Outreach. We provide health and safety information in a variety of languages right here. If you'd like more information about ECHO, please give us a call or check out our website at www.echominnesota.org. Once again, I'm your host, Lillian McDonald. You've been watching ECHO on folic acid. Until next time, take care. ECHO TV, 
is a co-production of Minnesota's Emergency and Community Health Outreach Collaborative of Health, Safety, Ethnic and Nonprofit Agencies and TPT's Minnesota Channel.